guys, welcome. Today we are going through the top five mistakes that are most commonly made when you bring your quilt to a long armor. Most of these are easily prevented, so stay tuned and we will get right into it. Graphic intro here. Welcome to Kachibachi, a channel where we help you hone your hobbies. Today we're talking about five common mistakes that happen when you bring your quilt to a long armor to have them quilt it. I've personally been long arm quilting for at least 10 years in a professional stance now and have quilted well over a thousand quilts, which just pretty much means that I've seen and made my fair share of mistakes when it comes to long arming. So our goal here today is to share a few of those with you in hopes of possibly sparing you some of that grief. In no particular order, we're going to jump right in. Number one, not enough backing. I know this seems like a no brainer, but it really is one of the most common mistakes that I see because not enough backing for a long armor is, nope, I said not enough. Starting over. Enough backing for a long armor is not the same as enough backing to cover your quilt. If you have one inch extra all the way around, there is no room for us to clamp that to a frame. You can't pin it, you can't clamp it. If you sew zippers on, you maybe could get away with it, but that's cutting it really close. And so you need, on average, and this varies from long armor to long armor, it's somewhere in the range of like four to six inches. Some may ask for more, honestly, and that's because quilts aren't always square or different frames have different requirements and you may have to start it a little further up, which means you need a little bit extra backing. Another good reason for that is clamping on the sides. So if you don't clamp on the sides, then that means you're more likely to end up with a pleat on your back. So extra on the sides is very, very beneficial for both you and the long armor. The other benefit to that is it gives your long armor a place to test the tension. You don't want your long armor testing your tension on your actual quilt itself because one, they're going to have to rip that out and that sucks for them. And two, you just don't want those extra holes in your quilt. And no matter what, we have to test the tension because there's so many variables between thread and your batting choice and your material types that affect tension. We have to test it on the actual material that we're going to be quilting with, which means on your quilt. So having extra backing to allow room for that is very, very nice. Now I know if you have a 40 inch wide baby quilt and your backing is 44 inch wide, that's cutting it pretty close. We totally get that. I don't want you to have to piece that backing. Don't worry. Take a scrap of muslin and sew it to each side and that gives them something to clamp to that's not going to end up in your final quilt but it gives your long armor what they need to give you the best results for your quilt. Number two, not enough batting. Pretty common, just like number one, and seems like a no-brainer, but it really does happen so much more frequently than you might guess. It's super easy to be at the store, don't have your quilt, don't have your measurements, grab a twin size thinking this is sure to cover it, and then when you show up at the long armors a week or two down the road, and all the measurements are made, it's shy. And really, it's no big deal if your long armor has batting there. It's just the frustration of thinking you're prepared, come to find out you're not, you have to get it from them now, and then that extra batting is gonna sit in your closet until you have something that you make in that size. So one way that's really easy to prevent this is to take a picture of your quilt pattern when you start your quilt. That way, whenever you're out, and about, you don't have your quilt with you, you randomly stop in because they have a fabric sale, then you have those measurements and you can grab everything you need and make sure that it's gonna be the right size when you do get to your long armors. Number three, improper border application. Now this may seem rather inconspicuous at first, but it can have some pretty brutal kickback in the end. If you don't properly apply your borders, then when you get it onto the quilt frame, if there's any extra fabric in that border, it's very, very likely to end up in at least some fullness or potentially pleats in those borders. Now, a little bit, like maybe an inch or two can be worked in, especially if you're using a high loft batting or if your quilter has a glide foot or something like it in their arsenal, then there's a little leeway there. There is no 
starting at the top, sewing all the way to the bottom, and just whacking off the excess. If you do that, for a baby quilt, maybe you can get away with it, but anything much larger than that, it's gonna have some drawbacks when it actually comes to the finished product of your quilt. I had one customer who, we addressed it before we even got it on the quilt frame, thankfully. She took it home, took off her border, measured, she was going to have an extra 13 inches worth of border fabric than what her actual quilt was. And there's no way for your long armor to be able to work that much fabric into the quilt without having some serious noticeable like pleats and side effects. So measure your quilt, cut your border to fit it, sew them on properly. It is absolutely worth the time and effort that it takes to do it right the first time. And just as a side note, I'm right there with you. I loathe putting on borders. It's literally my least favorite thing to do. I will bind a million quilts before I would like happily put on borders. I do it, but I don't do it with the best attitude if I'm being honest. Number four, your backing isn't square. It's not that this is the end of the world. It's just that it's slightly rude. Um, if you take and sew two pieces together and one of them is two inches longer than the other, whack it off. That's your job, not theirs. It has to be squared to go on the frame. It's just a courtesy. I'm not saying that it will hate you, but I will totally judge you slightly. Um, so just don't do it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> two thumbs up. This is all I'm good for. Number five, go in with unrealistic expectations. When you're taking your quilt to someone who long arms, especially professionally, there's a very high chance that they have at least a handful of quilts on a log that would be in front of yours, which means it's not a very common occurrence for you to get your quilt back in one to two days. Things like location, time of year, especially around like graduation time, holidays, you the long armor's expertise, whether they offer custom quilting, all of those things are gonna factor in to how long it takes for you to get your quilt back. So if you plan accordingly, then you won't be disappointed when you get there. If you know that you have a baby shower in six weeks, and you know that you haven't even started or purchased fabric for this baby shower, Call your long armor, say, hey, I have a baby shower. I'm working on the quilt still. Could you put me on your log and then I can bring it to you as soon as I have it done. That gets you in that lineup so that you're not waiting three weeks while you piece your quilt, getting your log in, and then having to wait another three to six weeks and missing your baby shower. Most long armors will be able to accommodate this in some way, shape or form, but showing up two days before the baby shower and expecting to jump in front of everybody who's been there for weeks and weeks waiting on their quilt is slightly unrealistic and just a little bit rude. Along with time frame expectations, monetary compensation can vary wildly from region to region. Depending on if you're getting your backing and your batting and your binding all done there, that adds up really, really quickly. So just know going into it, you may have to put a deposit, you may have to pay everything up front, or some owners have you pay at completion. So go in with some sort of expectation or call ahead of time in order to find out how they go about that process. Cheaper isn't necessarily better, neither is more expensive, but heirlooms aren't free and you just wanna find someone who's gonna put in the same effort that you did. All right guys, that is it. Those are some of the most common mistakes that I see on a pretty much weekly basis quilting for the public. As a long armor, I genuinely do not care if you lop off every single point in your quilt. If you had fun sewing it, really that's like the main goal for me. I just want to help you finish it. So if you have 500 threads that are unclipped on the back, you've got creases here and there that you didn't press out, couldn't care less. That's entirely your prerogative. If you enjoyed the process, or even if you're just so totally over it and like, I never want to see this again, that's fine. Doesn't bother me at all. I just want to help you finish your projects and I enjoy the process of doing the long arming. So if it's 
anything like in that realm, they're not there to judge you and critique every little mistake that you made in your building process. They're just there to judge you if it's not square. Right. <laughs> so if you don't take the two minutes to cut off your backing, sure, I might judge you a little. But if you cut off every point in your quilt, I judge you slightly less. So <laughs> it's priorities here, guys. If your job is harder, that's fine for you. Just don't make my job harder. <laughs> so um, that's what we're really getting down to. <laughs> Anywho, thanks for joining us today, guys, and sticking in all the way to the end. We really appreciate that. Hit subscribe if you want to see more content. And we'd also like to say a special thank you to Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts for the inspiration for today's video. If you have any ideas or inspiration that you'd like to share with us of content you'd like to see here in the future, just drop us a line in the comments. We would love to see those things. So thanks again.